Hi, I'm Paul Brody, and this is my shop. We have a project today. We're going to make a head tube badge. Everyone that has a bicycle is aware of head tube badges, and I have a, a head tube here. This is an inch and eight head tube, so it is kind of old school, but doesn't really matter for our purposes here. And what we're going to do is to make a B. I used to own the Brody name, but First I sold half my name, I know it sounds a bit funny. And then four years later, that was 2001, I sold the other half of my name. So I do not own the, own the rights to the Brody name anymore, but I am Paul Brody. So this is basically what we wanna do. We wanna make a head tube badge out of aluminum. And I do have a piece of aluminum here and it probably looks like it's gonna work just fine, but it's not because there's no way you can hold this while you cut out the shape. So what we're gonna do, I've got this piece of aluminum here, and it's a little too small on the ID, and it's a little too large on the OD. So we'll go over to the lathe now. I'll turn this down, and then we can start the process of making a bead. As you can see, the end of the tube has been hacksawed. It's at a slight angle. So the first thing to do is to put this piece of aluminum, and 6061, into the chuck and we'll take a face off the end so that it's square. Make it tight. I need a tool holder now, and these are my tool holders. I've got six of them. I'd like to have eight of them. So that's gonna go like that. It's faced, it's square. And now I can start the other machining operations. I use a tool like this, it's called a boring tool. I need to know the size of the tube. It's the OD, outside diameter, that's what OD means. So there it is, it's 1.426. I need the badge to be slightly larger than this. So if I zero that, and then if I add a little bit, there you go, I'm adding four and a half thou. That's, that's my new zero. So if I check the size again, it's smaller by 5,000. And look at this size, and I have to take out 41,000. Perfect, that says half a thou. So the next step is to do the OD. And all I'm looking for here is about a wall thickness of about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'll put this on here, I'll leave a little extra. There's my mark. So I'm at 83 thou, and I want to be at about 60, 65, that's 16th of an inch. So it's 20 thou more I need to take off. So here's my dial, I'm at 100, so there's 10 thou and 20 thou. that's fine. So we can take this out of the out of the chuck now and go back to the vise and then I'm gonna outline the B. I have the tube, I got the B. It's, Im it's important to get the angle right. So I'm looking at the bottom and when the bottom is level, that's when I wanna hold it. I got a little bit of masking tape in each hand and then mark with the second hand. I got a little, little Sharpie here, a little fine liner and I'm gonna go around it And I'll take off the tape. So that's what we have to cut out now. Now some people have, have said to me, why don't you just use a flat piece and then cut it out and then bend it? But it doesn't work like that because it's un uneven, uneven in the thickness. Right here where it's really on the thin side, it's gonna bend a lot easier than it is right down here. So that's not really an option. 
So you need to start with a two if you want to do a really nice job. We're in the mill. I've got a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to spin that at 2000 RPM. And this has to happen in stages. I can't do it all at once. I'm going to do this part first here. And then I'll go in there and I'll do the back. So I have to use both hands at the same time because I'm, I'm cutting at an angle. And what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to leave the, the red felt pen mark and get as close to it as possible. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's a little bit rough, but I got a file and I've left the line on there, which is what I wanted, because when you go in, into the line, it means you've taken off a little too much. So that's why we have all this extra on here, because now I can hold this section here in the vise and it's, it's a thick wall. I can clamp it quite firmly and I can do what I want. If I only started out with this little piece, you can see now, I'd have no way to hold this. See down here, I got a selection of files. This sits on the bench and I've chosen these four to start with. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm looking for some smoothness. I'm looking for a nice, a nice little radius. I'm going to do the middle of the B next. I can still see most of, most of the red felt pen, so I'm happy with that. I got a scraper here, it's kind of worn down a lot, but you can use this carefully and, and it'll take off the burr. You can see how it just, it puts a little bit of a radius on the corner. A chamfer, I should say. So the next step is to come around here. I won't go the whole way, but I'll go halfway. When you're filing, you got to have some patience. It doesn't happen real quick, and if you're not careful, you won't do a good job. So I think the key is a lot of patience, a bit of hand-eye coordination, and you have to keep on looking. If you just file and file and file and don't look, you'll get into trouble. Knock the corner off just a little bit. Change files. Okay, so when I started this, I pulled out four files. Now I'm up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've doubled my files. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I like how the, how the corner comes down in the B. And I've got a good outline, so we'll go in now. And what we'll do is we'll use the end mill and we'll, we'll cut down here.
I can't really use the end mill here because what's happening at the end, it gets way too short. So I'm gonna use the hacksaw now and I'll, I'll cut this off. I found a piece of, of brass. It's not exactly the right size. It's a little bit smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put a piece of cardboard there. That's gonna space it out. And then I'll, I'll put the B on top of the cardboard. Another piece of cardboard, which will help to make sure that I don't get any scratches on the B. And then a hose clamp. So that's a pretty good way to hold this now. So you can see this is held really well. Now I have to file that. So I'm going to take some emery cloth now. If you look on the top, you see how it's kind of rough looking. It is the right shape, but it's not really smooth. So if I take a little bit of emery cloth, and that's that 80 grit again. And if I go along, I can go this way a little bit too. And then I can switch to a little finer. This is 320. When you say this is a labor of love. There we go, that's nice and smooth. So I just have to do it around the bee with all the rest of the surface. If you're wondering how these get held onto the head tube, I usually mask around where I want the bee to be and then I take off the badge, I, I scratch it up a little bit on the paint or the surface, and then I hold it on with some silicone. This stuff here is from Home Depot, highly recommended. Not making any money off this endorsement at all. I have to do the inside of the B and then I think we're basically done. If your emery cloth is too wide, you just rip a strip. Just like that. And then I can put it in here. And there's that same cross hatch again. I'm going one way, then I'm going the other way. That's a nice way to make things smooth. If you only ever go one way with a file or emery, you don't have a really good chance of making things smooth. So I'm gonna sand on the, on the corners just to knock off the edge just a little bit. I got some scotch bright here. It's just red, red scotch bright, and I can make a little bit more of a polish on this. I was careful holding it. I had had the cardboard and the hose clamp, so I didn't put any extra marks in it myself. And it got machined earlier today, so that's basically what it looks like. It's all done. I'm satisfied with that. Thank you for watching my video. Actually, my video and Mitch's, you can't see him. Thank you, hope you tune in again. Have a good day, stay safe.